Okay, everyone, so today we're going to start to talk about social media. Uh, and there are literally dozens, if not by now, hundreds of social networks out there. Maybe we know the two or three or four or five big ones, but there's many, many of them out there. And we will cover a few of them in the class. But really, CIS257 is the one where we focus more on social media, 255, this class. It's a bit of an overview on a variety of these concepts, so we touch on a few social networks. But CIS257 is literally called, you know, social media marketing, so it's many more social media networks. Yes? Do you know when that next class is that? Most, most likely it'll be in the, what's the next semester, the fall, after the summer. After the summer, we'll have the fall semester. So it's going to be in the fall semester, which is probably uh, August to December uh, this year, 2016. And probably, when again, Wednesday night, sometime around this time. And previously, it's been Monday night. It's two days a week, Monday nights when, and Wednesday nights, like from 5 to 7, something like that. I don't know exactly at the moment, but usually it's been at about that time and day. So it's also, I think it's a three-unit class. I believe this one's two units, the other one's three units, because we meet twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays traditionally. Uh, so, oh, you teach that too. yeah. So CIS 257. And so just to show something here, if you'd like to take a quick look at this, if you go online, one of my websites, this is, this is not a client, this is one of my own websites. Um, just a bunch of different things about myself, and at the bottom there is a social networking section. So there's all of these social networks that you can find me at, on at various places, and that's just a small list and other ones. Um, but you have a social presence on all of them. Yeah, and so uh, we won't have time to talk about them all in this class, but in the social media class we can talk about a bunch of them. I have to double check the syllabus for this class, but uh, I believe we're talking about Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and I don't have Snapchat here, but I believe we're doing Snapchat. I'm going to have to check the syllabus. Google, Google Plus. Google Plus in this class in the syllabus, if I've got Can it there yet. Google Plus down? No, it's still around. It's got hundreds of millions of users. It's actually my favorite so social network. Uh, and it, and uh, anecdotally, when I do something like this for a client, when I use social media for clients, if I post the exact same thing on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+, I often get better, the best results on Google+. So when we get to that, we'll talk about it, and we hear all of these gloom and doom things about Google+, Plus is going extinct and all of that. But in the real world, as I've used it, it's not. It's very valuable. It has gotten our various clients a lot of traffic. Um, There's well, a lot of people like it because it doesn't, it's not that popular. Huh? No. There's a lot more people who gravitate to it that don't want all the uh, hoopla around it, you know. You go there, take care of your business, and, you know. One of the things is that uh, nowadays on all of these networks, basically there's a form of advertising, except for Google+. Uh, Google Plus doesn't have the inundation of, of advertising like Facebook and Twitter and now Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram. Flickr's got advertising and Tumblr, they've all got advertising. At the moment, not Google Plus. They can afford it because Google makes all its money from Google search. Question? What, what do you know about the Facebook that, uh, it's going down? Going down in what way? Yeah, so people is not using it anymore. A lot of people is going down. Well, you always hear up and down about Facebook, that people are going to finally leave Facebook, people don't like Facebook, this and that, but it's got one and a half billion users. And even if it goes down 1% of that, 10% of that, 50% of that, that's still, you know, a billion users. So... And is, and is it fair to say that maybe the young, so younger people are maybe... Some of them are migrating from the young of their parents to see what they're doing? That might be a better way to say it, that it depends Not on the demographic. Them. It depends on the demographic. Maybe the younger set is leaving Facebook, but maybe if our young, if our audience is not the younger people, it doesn't matter. If our audience is, you know, big companies and such, definitely Facebook. Maybe Snapchat 
uh, if you're reaching a younger audience maybe Instagram there's so many to choose from when we talk about those it'll it'll be it'll make more sense a lot of younger people that gravitate towards Snapchat filters yeah definitely definitely we're gonna talk today about Twitter Twitter just turned 10 years old this month Twitter's been around a decade Changed the world it has and so <laughs> Uh, we're going to use it for for business purposes because just like anything and with social media any social network can be used for two big purposes a you know a fun personal frivolous aspect and a business aspect and both are legitimate uses if I want to use Twitter you know for friends and family and all of that great if I want to use it for business great if I want to use Flickr for friends and family great if I want to use it for business great all of these networks can be used for those two dual purposes and um, for in various degrees some are more effective than others and we're going to talk about Twitter first because I think it's one of the ones we can kinda get up and, and running a lot quicker once we talk about Facebook Facebook is great because as a company you can reach a lot of people I personally full disclosure hate Facebook I don't like to go on Facebook I don't like to use Facebook personally but for business I love it I love Facebook because I can reach so many potential c customers on Facebook. I like, for personal, the best, Google+. I love to hang out on that, meet new friends, and hang out and have fun on Google+. And it also works really well for business. And in the middle, I also like Twitter a lot for, for business or for, or for personal. And there's all these other ones here, plus others that are not there, even listed. So we're going to talk about Twitter today. How many of you currently have a Twitter profile? All right, if you've got a Twitter profile, how many of you have it set up for business? Now, uh, Twitter doesn't make a technical distinction between business and personal. You create a Twitter account and you can use it for business or personal. Facebook and Google Plus and Pinterest and others do make a distinction that say if you're gonna use Facebook for business you should create a Facebook business account if you're gonna use Pinterest for business you should create a business Pinterest account Twitter does not at the moment does not care if you create the personal one or the business one both of them have the same setup process uh, so that makes it a little bit easier to work with and when we talk about the other ones a little later we will then talk about the big difference in how to set them all up. I think that Twitter also offers the options like uh, Google to pay for advertising. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it also like with Google, if you know what you're doing though, you can set it up to get advertising without paying for it? Or, do you, or is it better to, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm asking, or is it better to pay for it on Twitter? The, there is a value to pay for this stuff. You can use any of these social networks for free or for paid. And there is a value of paying, you know, ads. Ads are always going to reach more people. Uh, we're going to talk about the free stuff at the moment, and then we'll touch a little bit more on the paid stuff a little later. And it is valuable. It's not, it's not you know, sometimes people say, why would I ever pay for any of this stuff? It's free. And sometimes we see articles or, you know, those scary chain letters that say, Facebook is going to start charging us to use it. Well, I got news for you. Facebook already charges us if you're a business. Because when we talk about Facebook, the most effective way to use Facebook is to pay for it. We'll get to that later. I don't want to scare you. We'll get to that later. But uh, all of these networks you can use for free or paid. And so over at Twitter.com, they're, they're changing their, their usage and their interface all the time. They're tweaking it here and there. And they've been around 10 years now. And... Uh, I really like it for business, but I also follow financial news a lot. And in the financial world, Facebook's not, uh, Twitter's not doing so well in the financial world. Face, uh, Twitter became a, uh, Twitter became a um, publicly traded company. Um, I think it's going to be a year very soon, meaning you can buy shares in Twitter stock. Like you can buy shares in Coca-Cola, shares in Nike, shares in Whole Foods. You can buy shares in Facebook. They came out about two years ago. You can buy shares in Twitter. Twitter shares, Twitter stock has not been doing well. It's been doing very bad, actually. You've lost money if you've bought shares in Twitter a year ago. Full disclosure, I've bought shares in Twitter. I've lost money on Twitter, but I still like Twitter. 
Um, so anyway, uh, they change their services and their system every once in a while. And if you go to Twitter.com, you see their attempt to woo more people to use Twitter. You see this very welcoming sort of sections of featured and sports and all of that. And I can go look at what's the latest tweets about lifestyle or music or news. It's, you know, it's a curated screen full of content. Um, people that are here on the homepage of Twitter are going to get a lot of activity, but obviously uh, you're not the First Lady, you're not ABC News, you're not the Huffington Post, you're not Bernie Sanders, you're not, you know, uh, the NFL. So to really get on the front page of Twitter like this, uh, calm down. You probably won't make it. It's going to be different ways that we will get traffic via Twitter. So since it looks like most of you have a Twitter account already, here's what I'm going to say. You can either log in to your current account or go through the sign-up process. The sign-up process takes a few steps and it asks you to fill a few things in. And I think what I would like to do is I would just like you to, to log in and then I'll start to talk about what I want to talk about Twitter. If you don't have an account, take a moment to click that button to create one. If you need any uh, help, call me over. Let's just log in or sign up, and then I'm going to go on to talk about, well, what's the most effective uses for Twitter? Does anyone need any help with the, with the setup? Okay, take a moment to sign in or sign up. Definitely. Look at the handles of big companies, you know, Nike. It's not going to have Janet from the social media department's name there. It's going to have Nike. So that username, there's the full name and there's the username. The full name is the name that appears up here. And the username is the one here. In this case, it's exactly the same. But if I look at Southwestern College, Southwestern College's Twitter, the full name is Southwestern College. The username is SWC underscore news. So definitely favor your business. And the thing is, this full name up here, again, they don't make a distinction between business and personal. And so it makes you think, okay, full name, I'll put my full name. No, you, you want to put your business name there. And that full name is not unique. I can create a brand new Twitter account with the full name The White House, and it'll let me. It'll let me create a brand new username, I mean a full name, uh, an account, and use the full name Barack Obama, and it'll let me. That full name right here is not unique. Anyone can make it in the world. If you look around on Twitter, you'll see lots of Darth Vader's because people want that name. The one that is unique that only one person in the world can have is the username right there. That's why Southwestern College had to settle for SWC underscore news. Now, how many of you knew that Southwestern College had a Twitter? And there it is. I would have thought, well, why don't they just have twitter.com slash SWC? Someone in like Hungary or something got that before Southwestern College, and that's the one that's taken, or Hong Kong. And so SWC is taken, and it's not Southwestern College. People aren't like squatting with this stuff. That's one of the things they really need to clean up on all of social media, not just Twitter. It's one of my big gripes of social media. This person has not tweeted anything since September 2014. And before that, you know, again, 
since 2012. Happy New Year, 2012. And nothing was posted for two years. I don't think that this person took the name away from Southwestern College on purpose. I think this person created this account, wanted to be on Twitter, got tired of it, went back to Facebook, but left it alone here, you know, fallow. I hope that the social networks implement some sort of plan that if something hasn't been used in like a year, give it up so someone else can claim it that really wants it. It would be really nice. So that's what Southwestern College has had to do. These names can be changed whenever you want to whatever you want, but if you give up your username, which is the one with the at symbol, if you give it up, change to something else, decide you want to bring it back, hopefully it didn't get taken. Because those are the unique ones that only one entity in the world can have. That's why you got people putting the real Donald Trump over there. Yes. <laughs> and so colleges are on Twitter, Businesses, celebrities, politicians, nations are on Twitter. You can go to check out the nation of Japan on Twitter. Uh, kind of interesting that they barely have 50,000 followers. But, um, you know, anyone can create a Twitter account and have anything online about it. So the way that you build um, followers, so I've got this sort of like test account for um, these classes and such, but it's also part of the homework. It's on the homework assignment, but make a note here. Uh, I've got this Twitter account, and the full name is Instructor Victor C, but the username is at SWC Victor Campos. Capitalization doesn't matter. You cannot put spaces in this username or dashes. You can put underscores. You can put numbers, but no symbols. So for the homework, for me to know that your Twitter account exists, at some point you need to go to my Twitter account and follow this account so that I can... Um, not on this one. <laughs> follow my real account with all my cool stuff. And so that is simply uh, the, the address... What's that? What is, your, what is your name? It's right up here at the top. So twitter.com slash SWC Victor Campos. It's going to be on the syllabus, I mean, uh, on the homework assignment. But uh, you want to follow that at some point so that oh, I can see that you've done that. Real time when I get follow, I think it's just one of us. Let's see if it goes up to one <laughs> And so, and so, that's one way to get followers. Ask for it. You know, be very obvious about it and say, don't forget to follow. And it sounds glib, but it is a tactic. Ask people in whatever way you can. Follow me on Twitter. Ask them in the real world. Ask them at your business meeting. Ask them at a network. Ask them at the coffee shop. Ask people. Hopefully you've got a name that you can convey verbally. Follow me at SWC Victor Campos. That's easy to do. Follow me at SWC underscore news underscore today. You know, that's why you want to create a name that is pronounceable because you will be wanting to say it once in a while in the real world. And if you've got all of these underscores and numbers and such, um, you know, you have to explain to the people, okay, that's a number two, not the word two. Well, it is two, but it's T-O-O, -O, not T-O. So that name right there, that username uh, is the unique one and um, one way to get followers is to ask people in the real world to follow you. Ask them in other networks. Maybe you're a superstar on Pinterest. Get on Pinterest trying to get followers to your Twitter and we'll talk about all of these details about well how do I manage them all at the same time? How do you do this? How do you do that? Uh, we're gonna see all of these various nuances of using social media because this is a full-time job. It is um, a full-time job to get hired as a social media marketer, and um, it's, a, it's a very valuable and pay, payable skill, too. Let's say you're learning this for you to get hired as this. You, you can do that. Yes? Yeah, I was just going to say for anyone else, uh, the name check, it's kind of cool. Uh, it's namecheck.com, but it doesn't have an E for the check. 
And then that way, let's say I really did like SOVC Victor Campos and I wanted to, yeah. And I wanted to get it through all, all the social media networks. You punch in what cool little handle you think you want to snag up and it'll check, you know, YouTube, Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, and all that. Because it's good to, you know, be consistent. Uniform. Yeah, yeah. There's this one and there's another one. I, for, I forgot to look it up, but this is this seems very good too. So the point here is I'm going to be Victor Campos on Twitter. And I also want to be Victor Campos on YouTube and Instagram and Snapchat, etc. Well, all of those separate networks um, are run by different companies, of course. And so if you don't snag your name, someone else could. And that's a whole big topic of, well, I wanted that name, someone else took it, someone hasn't used it in, in two years, I can't get it back. So with a site like this and others, it can have it check for you on all of the networks to see if a name is taken. Yeah. Let's see here. So this obviously should say that the one on Twitter is taken because obviously it's taken. Uh, the dot coms, it also tells you on websites, oh look at that, I can get swcvictorcompos.xyz, just like I always wanted. And then you'll see it's available on all of these networks, on eBay, GitHub, and so forth. I just saw something here too, uh, just to get you thinking of something. All of these social networks, basically, we use them for business, and the result of using them is that per perhaps we get traffic to our website, perhaps we get sales and such. But there are two social networks off the top of my head that you can use and actually earn money from. Like um, add po photos and pictures and all of that, and as you become famous on these social networks, you can you can make money. One of them is Sue, T S U. Sue, which is over at Sue.co. This one is the social network that pays you as you use it. Is that the one that Facebook didn't allow? Mm -hmm. oh. Facebook was so scared of them, they blocked links from Sue on Facebook. They were so scared of them, they deleted all mentions of Sue. They went into people's private conversations on Facebook and deleted all instances of Sue into the past as well. Now, they've, now they're playing nice because supposedly the problem was that Sue was using a certain sort of protocol that Facebook didn't like. And now that Sue's using the proper protocol, now you can see Sue links on Facebook again. Convenient. <laughs> Yeah, because if it's you know, it's like it's the thing about it's the thing about the private property. You know, if they create a network, technically you're agreeing to use it in a certain way, uh, and if you don't use it the right way, then they can kind of shut you down. Question? How much have you made off Sue? Like a dollar. <laughs> I haven't used it very much, but I have seen it that yeah, you share stuff, you post to it, and then it. It does add up little by little. Is, that, is it kind of like YouTube, where if you're like a rising star and you, you attract an audience, since you're attracting the eyeballs, then the mark, some of the marketing revenue goes to you? Is that kind of Very, very similar to that, exactly. You share something on Sue, someone likes it, they reshare it, it goes on, and then little by little that's building, you, you know, cents, and then it adds up and such. Uh, the thing about Sue is that uh, if you want to get running up faster if you get a referral from someone you you can get into sue and, and start using it easier and, and better and so if you try to create an account it says okay who's your referrer well let me recommend someone that is on on sue at the moment and then so if you're going to create an account here you might as well follow the referral and use mine right there and then that'll get you on sue and get you rich one day so this is one of the networks that is like every other network, but the big thing about it is that you get paid for it. The other one that came out after Sue that I've been exploring and also liking and also you can get paid from, at the moment it's only, it's only an app. Uh, Sue, you can log into the app for iPhone or Android or the website. There's another network that is only an app at the moment. You can't get it on the website. And that one is called Rabadaba. R A B A D A B A, Rabadaba.com, the world's first social network 
platform that actually pays you for your great content. Well, not really. I just showed you Sue first. But uh, Rabadaba, you can get the app there. And also, it's like Twitter. It's like Facebook. It's all of these networks. But the point is that that one you get, you also get money. You get, I think they call them Rabobucks. You get this fake currency. You build up enough of them. And every 15th of the month, then they pay it in real cash. On that one, I've made like another $5 off of. So the more you use it, the more you get paid. Like central post, central Basically, it's 1,000 Raba bucks for one real dollar. And so all of this stuff that you share there, um, you know, someone posted that amazing photo. And on this one, they, they earned 74 Raba bucks. Um, you know, you add that all up to, see, that one's got 61. So it looks just like any, like Facebook and Instagram and all of that. It looks like any other network. But the thing about it is that you actually get paid from it. You're not going to get paid from Facebook. You're not going to get paid from Twitter, Pinterest, uh, all of those directly. But you are going to get paid from these two that I just mentioned. What does they use to you pay you? How do they determine? There is a frequently asked questions here that basically. It has, it has to do with how many followers you have and how far your pictures go. Like I post something, I have no followers, no one sees it and likes it, so I don't get very much out of it. But if I get 10 followers and all of those 10 followers click a like or a comment or whatever, all of those worth are like, you know, two and five and three Robabucks, bucks and then they add up. And the more you have, the more people followers, the more you can get out of your things here. We're getting a little off tangent, but these two here, I recommend you check them out. This one doesn't need any special, you know, code to sign up, but you do need the app, to my knowledge. Yeah, you need to go get the app, Android or iPhone, um, for Rabadaba. For Sue, you can create the account on the website and use it on the website. And uh, again, on that one, I recommend use my referral code to get into that. With Twitter, the thing about all of social media, because I teach that CIS 257 in the fall, and I also teach up for San Diego City College, I teach there a social media class. And really the thing about all of this social media for a business is it's a form of marketing, it's a form of advertising. Think about in the real world, there's a restaurant. How might you have heard of the restaurant? Maybe you walked by it and wanted to check it out. Maybe someone told you about it that they visited. Maybe you saw a billboard about it. Maybe you heard about it on the radio or on TV or the internet. You heard something, some form of advertising, you know, educated you about that restaurant. Uh, for businesses, uh, that's uh, social media takes that role because in the real world, it costs money to put that billboard up. It costs money to put that newspaper ad. It costs money to get, uh, you know, that guy to stand on the corner flipping the sign. All of that marketing costs money in the real world. In the social media world, there is, you can pay for, for some exposure and such, but with a platform like Twitter that is so open, you can get really, really far without paying. You can reach an audience. You can get potential customers. You can get followers with very little barriers. Because if you think about it like this, uh, you, you can get followers on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and Snapchat and all of these networks, Rabadaba, Sue, you get followers. What's the point of a follower? Sometimes when my company goes with a client and we're trying to you know, give them a presentation about, you need to get on Twitter, you need to get on YouTube, whatever. Uh, they say, like, why? My, my kids are on it and they're just wasting time all day on it. That's the aspect of social media that I said is the, is the frivolous aspect, which, which is legitimate. But we tell them, this is a form of advertising, this is a form of reaching an audience, because think about it like this. In this particular account, there are 122 followers. This means 122 people on Twitter chose to follow this account, chose to see the latest tweets. And my tweet can contain text, video, audio, links. So I can tweet out, let's say this is Victor's Bakery. I've got 122 followers. And I tweet, sale this Saturday. 
use this coupon. And I'm giving out a coupon on Twitter for people to, to use and buy my cupcakes. So that's why you want followers on any social network. You want that captive audience. When you put out that billboard on the highway, people are going to drive by it day after day. Some will look at it. Some will not pay attention. Many will look at it and not follow through, not buy anything, not call you. And you spent lots of money on that billboard. But what's the return on investment? Perhaps very low. Very few people are actually picking up the phone and calling you. You can spend time on Twitter in a similar fashion putting your message out there and it's not going to cost you anything. It's going to cost you your time, but you can of course decide the value of that. And so here when I'm tweeting stuff, 122 people could see it. And uh, that's why you want to build more followers. Okay, and they two may tweet and somebody else Exactly. Let's say I've only got 10 followers. I tweet something, and one of those people has 100 followers, and they retweet it, they share it. So now I've reached 110 people instead of 10 people. That's another reason, build more followers. They can further your message. They can be your cheerleaders. So I want to get followers. More followers is more eyeballs, more followers could be more follow-through, as in someone actually buys your product, subscribes to your newsletter, hires you, whatever. More people looking at you, paying attention to you. So it's an ego boost to see that high number of followers. But for business, it's not an ego boost. It's a necessity, because these are people that really care about your business to order your product, to call you and ask you more questions, to hire you. And unfortunately, it doesn't it isn't a one-to-one -one, um, result, meaning I have 122 followers, but that doesn't mean I'm going to make 122 sales. Far from it. You really have to think very conservatively and, and think of the mantra of the 1%. 1% of my followers are the ones that are really going to care enough to buy the product, subscribe, donate, whatever. What's 1% 1 of 100 followers? One 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 real follower out of your 100 and that's a very conservative estimate one percent you might be a superstar on social media you might be closer to 10 percent 20 percent 50 percent 90 percent i don't know but if you think about it in the in like the most conservative way one percent are the ones that are really going to care you have then a high bar i need to get 500 followers a thousand followers what's one percent of one thousand 10 or 100? I'm not good at math. Let's say 10. So 10 people are really uh, going to follow through. That's why you want to keep getting followers and followers and followers. Easier said than done, of course. That's what we're going to talk about in just a moment. Yes? What would be the best platform for mature people to post about their business? That's a little hard to say because everyone's going, if you search that online, everyone's going to give you an answer about this kind of people are on this network and this kind of people are on that kind of network. Everyone's going to give you advice or opinions on which is the best network for a demographic. And to some degree, they're all right and they're all wrong. And the reason for that is it also depends on your product, your target audience. Remember we did that assignment about what's your target audience? Who are you trying to get? So maybe you read an article that says, I've got to get on Facebook because this article and, and three others say that you know the 65 and up crowd is on Facebook. Well, that might be true for 1,000 companies, but not for you. So I can give opinions and answers and such about that, but really you, you kind of don't know until you, you try it. Although, I saw this on Wikipedia. Wikipedia has an article about all of the social networks. And in there, they have, um, they have a big chart of social networks. List of social networks. They have a list of social networks on, on Wikipedia here. And then 
here they kind of give an opinion about the focus. We might want to browse there. So automated.com is for any kind of music. You can always general flip or deep is for Norwegian community. So I would recommend look there and see if, if you find an audience there that might uh, be good for you. And then it'll tell you how many people are, are registered in it and such. So I want to get followers. I already said one possible way to get followers is you ask people in the real world to follow you. So they keep up to date with you. That's one way. Another way is use Twitter itself to ask people in, in a certain way, like this. Twitter and all the networks have search. And this search searches inside of the network only. It doesn't reach out to the rest of the world. You know, this is not a regular Google search. This is not going to search the, the whole internet. This is just going to search in Twitter. And what you could do here, let's say I'm Victor's Bakery, and I look up cookies. It might give me suggestions of accounts that have cookie in the name. It might give me suggestions to search cookies, cookies and cream, cookies online. I'm going to ignore those and just search cookies. <clears throat> because one of the effective ways to use any social network is to do searching. And here on Twitter, it's showing the top tweets that use cookies. Live, which is the latest tweets about cookies. Accounts that have that keyword in their description. Photos, videos, etc. So the point of this, it just in the moment that I was talking, three new tweets about cookies came up. So you search keywords on Twitter. You search for these keywords about what your business is, what it does, what you're about and you're going to see people uh, using these keywords. You're going to see that, okay, this person, cayenne cookies with cream ice cream cake. So this person, baby Kim Kai 94 and then 14 new tweets there. The point is you search, and you can, um, you can hover over someone's name and then click the follow button. One way to get followers is for you to follow people. I'm showing you here. Search for people about a topic that your business is and follow some of them. Now, that's not the best way. I'm still going to talk about other ways. But I've said two ways so far. In the real world and searching. The problem with this way is just because you follow 10 accounts, 20 accounts, 50 accounts, just because you do this search and you follow 20 accounts, I I follow this person, and I follow this person, and this person, does not mean you will get a follow back. This is really a numbers game with this tactic. Out of 100, I might get 5 follow backs. I don't know. I might get 90 follow backs. I don't know. This technique does give you results. It could be very slow. And what you're doing is you're following these accounts that actually maybe they're usually not really tweeting about that topic that you really like. Maybe at the moment they mention cookies, but most of the time then they're going on about their crazy political rants. And you're going to see all of those crazy political rants on your home screen. So this is a possible technique. You follow accounts related to topics, and some of them will follow you back. Related to this particular tactic is, I would still search, but instead of following, you could engage in one of the three other interactions. One interaction is a follow, and the others are these right here. Reply, retweet, favorite, or like. Every social network has a version of this. If you really enjoy something on Facebook, you give it the like. Or I guess now the other little emoji things, right? If you enjoy something on Twitter, you give it a like. If you enjoy something on Google+, Plus, we'll see it's a plus one. If you like something on Pinterest, there's a like. They all have a version of a like. The like is the most transitory, the most throwaway of all of the possible interactions. Because I can like this and move on. What's next? I'm liking this one. Move on. What's next? 
So the point of this, to give likes to people's content, is these people get a notification. Just like I got some notifications that you guys followed me, whoever you like their stuff, they will get a notification that says Victor's Bakery liked your post. And they will get made aware of your account. Uh, because no one knows you, you exist, perhaps. Just because you're tweeting every day, five times a day, doesn't mean anyone's going to see it, perhaps. You have to make yourself known. This is one way. You search and you interact. I like this, so then Giselle here got a notification. I like this one over here, and then the cyber police got a notification. I like this one, and Marvelicious Confetti, Confection, got a notification. So I'm making these people aware that I exist. And notice, 34 new tweets on this topic. So over here. You know, another one here. Um, the next level of interaction is the, is the retweet. That's basically sending your tweet to, more, to your followers. Um, the point of that, again, is to make an account aware that you exist. You retweet someone else's tweet, they take it in terms of, oh, this person likes what I tweeted. Let me follow them, perhaps. The next level up on that is a reply, because then you've taken the time to much more directly interact with an account. So this one here, online shopping and Girl Scout cookies are my biggest weaknesses. If I click the reply, I'm about to tweet something directly to this Twitter user. And I do highly recommend to talk to strangers on Twitter, not in real life maybe, be careful, and social media. Talk to strangers because those are your potential new customers, your potential new clients. And so I'm choosing to reply to this person, and this is an art and a science, what do I say? I'm about to talk to a stranger, what do I say? Here, this does take the practice, this is very hard to teach, it does take the practice of you interacting with people. That's why there was that assignment about what's the voice of your company online? Are you going to use contractions? Are you going to be personal, stoic, detached, friendly? You know, how are you going to communicate online? Because you are going to use it directly in social media like this. Let's say I'm Victor's Bakery. My goal is to sell cupcakes. Perhaps I can get cash to buy a cupcake. I'm not going to simply click reply and, say, and put a link and say, buy our cupcakes. That's either going to get me blocked or they're going to swear at me. I'm not going to go to the hard sell right away. Because I don't want to be, think about yourself, I don't want to be marketed by some stranger, buy this, I don't even know you. Block. So you're going to build a relationship. This person says this, so how can I say something funny or interesting or witty or a question? How can I get the ball rolling to maybe get a reply, better yet, get a follow? And the more followers I have, perhaps one of them will actually become a sale. So, you know, depending on your the voice of your of your company, you're going to reply in the voice of your company. You know, you're going to reply in the voice of your company to them and think about writing something in terms that it is not like a dead-end conversation. It's me, say, me, say, me saying that or true that, that's a dead-end. What more can we say? How much more can we converse? If instead I say, you know, true that, what's your favorite flavor? Question. That's what I'm getting at. Ask questions. Get the user into a conversation. That's the social in social media. Uh, you want to use social media as a dialogue, not as a monologue. What's a monologue? It's one person talking, basically. Talking to yourself, talking at a person. One person. A dialogue then is a conversation too, back and forth. 
if I had simply said, you know, a sort of dead-end sentence, that's a monologue. They can see it, they can ignore it, they can block me, they can move on, whatever. But here, I've, in, I've got an enticement. There's a question. It's on the topic of what they tweeted originally. They could ignore it. They could block me. They could reply and say, leave me alone. Or they could actually get in on the conversation. And honestly, in the years that I've been doing it, it's kind of rare to get the negative reaction if you are positive. You know, positivity breeds positivity. Negativity breeds negativity. So if you're going to be positive on social media to people, you'll probably get positivity back. And it does happen once in a while that someone comes back at you negative, even if you're positive. But I would not take that as as, a, as personal, or I wouldn't uh, keep it as a fear for me to, to progress. Yes? Roland, you have the mom. I like your peanut butter and what's your favorite? Yeah. Something like that to promote the conversation. Exactly. Any way that you want to handle this. I could add my opinion first and ask for their opinion next. I could just write this and write an emoji or a smiley or whatever and then just to kind of show that I'm, you know, friendly and all of that is if they when I tweet them and then they're going to see if my company said Victor's Bakery, they're going to look at Victor's Bakery, who's that? Is that a company? You don't know. You don't know if people will take it good or bad, but if you do things in a positive way, you should get positive results. This is a more effective way to get followers. So the simply click follow, click follow, click follow, that has a value. But again, it's lower than um, in other ways. This one of actually interacting with people in a positive way, that's got a higher result, a higher return on investment. It does take the time for you to search the keywords, look at people's tweets, think of something to reply, get the conversation going. Like right here, Chipotle is doing that right now. My tactic, Chipotle tweeted to Alex Gurkha, um, little tech support there, and you can look at the whole conversation. I'm gonna view conversation, hopefully it's safe for work. And then, uh, so Chipotle tweeted something first, then Alex Gur uh, Gurkha said, won't let me enter my phone number. And then Chipotle replied, try clearing your browser and so forth. So Dre on the Chipotle team replied to this person because that's a customer. Probably dad Alex follows Chipotle and that's why when Chipotle tweeted that dad saw it he's having trouble which is to you know do a sale or whatever they're doing uh, score a free order of chips and guac. So he wants some free chips and guac. Well, out of that free stuff, you might actually then buy something real. And there Chipotle is trying to do a little tech support. So this tactic here. Okay, see this one. It's an emergency. I opened our last box of Girl Scout cookies. Okay, this could be a possibility if I was Victor's Bakery to say something like, you know, get on their side. Tragedy. But never fear. Here's where the salesmanship comes in. Never fear. We sell a version of your favorite Scout cookies with a healthy twist and then a link to go buy them. It's okay to put in the sale here and there it's okay to do something like this once in a while you, you will sometimes get a positive result, sometimes a negative result. I'm trying to couch it in terms of, I feel your pain, and here's our version of it, buy now. But not in such the obvious way about buy now, right? And the possibilities are positive or negative. I'm going to get ignored, I'm going to get cussed out, I'm going to get blocked, all those possible negativities. Or the positive is, they will simply reply and say, great or they will click favorite, or they will do nothing. 
it's a numbers game. But popularity breeds popularity. Right now, if I've got two followers, I'm not going to get very far. But as I start to build followers, 10 followers, 20 followers, 30 followers, 50, 100, 1,000, 10,000, if I start to get to those levels, then many more results come. But it's a slow uphill climb in the beginning. Any questions so far? Let's say another tactic for followers is notice this business, this company account here. I've got these number of followers. But through this business, I am also following some accounts. 70. Um, following you know various students I, I I follow you back for the class and then also um, you know Southwestern College and, and all of this stuff here you know business you know schools and all of that the point of um, the point of you, sh you should still follow accounts let's say you don't want to do what I'm saying about search and then follow because the ratio is pretty low. Let's say you don't want to follow. I still recommend you follow, especially big accounts. Let's say I'm Victor's Bakery. What's a big name in the world of cooks and chefs and all of that? Um, Alton Brown. Ramsey. Gordon Ramsay. I'm gonna, for this case, oh, I'm just gonna Brown. do Alton Brown. So, he's, uh, he's, he's famous in the world of cooking. Okay, let's say I follow Alton Brown. I'm probably not going to get any interaction out of him. He's too famous, being on like four shows. So I'm not going to get a reply. That's not my point. I'm going to follow big accounts. You know, he's got 2.86 million followers. And he is following 1,093, but I probably am not going to get followed. You're probably not going to get followed by big celebrities. But you should still follow big celebrities in your niche because of this. These people are tweeting, and if you look at their tweets, 78 retweets, 249 favorites, 284, 323. Okay, the point of that is that when you click on the tweet to, to view it, to expand it, it'll tell you all of the people that interacted. These people that are interacting with this account on a topic that my business is, these are the people you want to try to further get as followers. These people followed Alton Brown because of cooking and food and all of that. My company is about cooking and food and all of that. These are the ones that are a little bit more apt to perhaps follow a cooking account. Remember, we've got likes, retweets, comments, and likes are the lowest level. They're not bad. They're just the lowest level. They're not the worst because the worst is that someone does nothing. They see a tweet and they move on. That's the worst. The lowest level is that someone gives a like. And I can get a list right here. If I click on how many likes, I get the list of all of the people that liked, or a big list of all of the people that liked it, so that then I can follow and maybe get a follow back, so that then I can interact with them and maybe get interactions back or follows. I can see who were these retweeters. These were enough, these were more people that liked that message so much they shared it. They might do the same with mine. Notice how the number is often lower. It's very easy to give a like, a little harder to give a retweet, even harder to give a good reply. That's why the reply is the highest level. Well, the follow is the highest level. The reply is second highest. So show me the list of retweeters. These people cared about enough about that tweet that maybe I should follow, maybe I should reply, maybe I should interact. I want Ricky Sullivan to know I exist, and Clifford Bright, and Meowing Princess. I want them to know that I exist so that they can reply to me, interact with me, and better yet, follow me. Once I build, build more followers, that could lead to more sales and traffic to my website. I could jump in on the conversation. I could butt in. Not in a rude way, but I could jump into the conversation. Jim Prozer here said, thanks, A.B. Uh, Alton Brown is probably not going to reply and say, you're welcome. He's a nice guy and cool and all of that, but he's probably got things to do. And Carla said, a cake would be a sweet tweet. 
Alton Brown is probably not going to reply and say kudos for that great tweet. But I can. I can jump in and I can continue the conversation and, and reply here. Alton Brown is such a great guy. We've been watching him on TV for 10 years. If I can do reply there, this will reply to Jim and Alton. And again, uh, Alton's probably not going to really notice because he's got so many followers, so I would just remove his. I, remove, I would remove the celebrity from the tweet reply. They're too big. But Jim has... Uh, oops. Jim has... Oh, he's got 5,000 followers, so he's a pretty big guy on, uh, on Twitter. 5,000. Um, but not so big, not so unattainable like Alton Brown. So I would jump in here with to Jim and, and say something like... AB is such a culinary milestone. Been watching him for a decade. Again, this is practice, this is an art, this is a science. This technically is that kind of a dead end conversation. I am being positive. I'm on his side. I said something, but how much further can we go from there? They may look at that and give a favorite, or they may look at it and move on. I could throw in a question. Notice I can also attach a picture. Now they've got animated GIFs, so you can you can be like Tumblr on Twitter. You can add a poll to your reply. Or a simple question. Again, this is the part that's a little harder to teach. What are you going to write for your business? I can't teach that for the whole class. We can, of course, do lab time, and I can help you one-on-one. -on -one. Let's brainstorm with you. But I'm trying to get you to think in a general sense. This is how we use all social media. Right now, Twitter, but these same ta tactics will work on Facebook, Pinterest, Snapchat, uh, Google+, uh, LinkedIn, blah, 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 blah. All the networks have a variation of this. So you're going to feel overwhelmed. I've got to be on all the social networks? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. Uh, because that's where people are at. And I'll talk about how to manage three at once. How to get other people to help you a little later. But what we're learning for Twitter will apply very, very closely on Facebook when we get to Facebook. On Google+, Plus when we get to Google+. Plus. But each one has its own nuances. Um, like, let's see, to further get the ball rolling, a fave recipe was choco truffles. What about you? I will send that one. And then now Jim got a notification, either on his website login or probably on his mobile device, and then he could do a reply ignore, block. He could reply positively, negatively, but I want to keep saying don't think about that it will be negative if you are positive. It's not, you know, it is a scary thing to talk to strangers um, on social media and such, but in my experience it's usually been very positive, especially if you're positive. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. So, um, what's also valuable to try to build an audience? Well, actually, before another tactic, um, the ones we've. What's that? <laughs> yes. Um, before we try to do any of the tactics that I've been talking about so far, um, before me doing a follow or replies and all of that, before any of that, you have to think, why would someone follow you? Let's say I just created the account and I'm trying to do all these techniques I'm talking about. Unfortunately, you're wasting your time. Why would I follow an account that doesn't have any tweets, that doesn't have any bio, that doesn't have any 
any setup, anything to offer. You know, just because someone followed me and I look at, I look them up and they've got nothing, well, I won't, I'm not going to follow that. So what I'm getting at is you should edit your profile to put in your company logo or yourself or whatever it is. You should fill in a biography and a website and links and such. You, you should edit your profile a bit to show people you're, you're real and legitimate because when you create a Twitter account for the first time you're just an egg you haven't hatched yet so you want to switch out your your logo and put your bio and all of that that's part of why we also did that those assignments on your company profile and such remember there it asks you for some biographical information the who why what and such you can take that stuff and condense it down to the size of a biography and reuse it over and over for all your social networks. That's fine. You don't have to craft a brand new bio for every single network. You could if you want to, or you can keep it consistent. That's fine as well. So you want to fill in their profile on all the networks. And then you also want to tweet to no one, to everyone. You want to tweet not targeted to anyone, not not latching onto a hashtag, which I'll talk about hashtags in a moment. You know, you need some content to entice people to follow you. So I would say like five tweets, just, you know, five tweets out there at once, a, you know, all five in one day or one today and tomorrow, whatever, just some content about what your account is on Twitter. So that then when you start to do follows, so that when then you start to do replies and such, people will say, who is this Victor's Bakery? Just like I can hover my mouse over anyone, anyone can hover my, their mouse over me and see, oh, okay, I see Victor's Bakery, family, family, family bakery in San Diego, blah, blah, blah. Ten tweets. And that could entice people more to, to follow. People want to follow accounts with content, with stuff that are real. And so you do want to fill your bio, add some content, and then further start to try to get the followers. Yes? Um, the thing here is that uh, you want to write something about your business. Mm -hmm. But uh, how do you divide between your possible customers and your possible competitors? Do you want to follow or be uh, seen by your possible customers and not uh, bring it to your page the one that is maybe your uh, big competitor that has uh, 12 other followers probably? There's very little that you can do to prevent that. This is the, the good and the bad about Twitter is that it's so open. Because then you, the, follow, the people who's following you is going to look at those that are your competitors. They probably want to choose them instead of you. How would they see your competitor? On your, on your post or tweets. So you're saying that if I tweet, I'm going to mention my competitor? No. You follow somebody that is... Uh, the same business field, field uh -huh. and then their they post get posted on your page. No, actually, on my profile page, people will only see what I have posted. So this is all the stuff I have posted. So my followers will only see that. When I'm on my home screen here, I see what I've posted and I see the stuff of those that I have followed. So only I see that. And I may follow all my competitors and I will see that. Yeah. Now they could they could see who I'm following by clicking following. That's public. So someone could go to my following and say, oh, Victor's Pizza is also following Pizza Hut. Let me follow Pizza Hut. Sure, that might happen. Um, but I don't really think of it as a big detriment. Uh, what I'm talking about here is like for a very social media savvy people in that let's look at following and followers and all of that. Regular people don't do that, don't do it that much. They follow tweets and such. One 
other possible way for you to follow the competition without making it very obvious is to add them to lists. So if I go over here, let's say I want to follow Fox News, but I don't want anyone to know that. So I go, to, I go to Fox News and I don't click follow. Instead, I go to the little gear and say I will add them to a list. List, whoever you followed on a list does not show up on your follower account. But people can still see your list. If they go to your profile, like right here for, for Fox, um, somewhere here I can see their list. Let's see, where did they put that? Uh, add or remove from list. Um, there is a way. I think after I follow them, I think there's the option to see their list. So it's public. That's the thing, basically. If you set your profile public, everything's going to be public. See, it shows here's my lists. People will be able to go see my lists. So really, there's no way to hide who have I followed. I guess the best way to, to hide that is to make a completely different account not related to your business and use that one for all your reconnaissance. But I wouldn't be too worried about someone seeing Victor's Pizza follow Victor's, I mean, Victor's Pizza follow Pizza Hut? Blasphemy. No, I'm not going to really be worried about that. Most people use Twitter um, like a person, not like a marketer, like us, so I wouldn't be too worried. And so, one more tactic is the hashtag and trends. When I go back to my home screen, on the left side it will show me trends. You can target those trends. Show me trends about the world, what everyone is talking about on Twitter in the world. Show me trends about what everyone is talking about uh, in San Diego, Tijuana, uh, Moscow, uh, Mumbai, etc. Jakarta, show me of a particular location, because Twitter is global. 320 million people globally use Twitter. So let's say I want to see what are the trends that are happening, you know, in Toronto. So I can say, what's everyone on Toronto going on about? So done. And it'll tell me this is what people on uh, hockey, hockey wives. This is what everyone's on in, in Toronto, Canada is talking about at the moment. North Carolina. Yeah. David Letterman. And so over here, let's see what's everyone on at uh, Nairobi talking all about. Church and politics. Zazi Tuva on BBC. Hot Lake WCW. So forth. So I can go look at these trends for specific areas. And the point of this is these are the topics that everyone is talking about on a particular day and location. These are topics further for me to interact with people. Uh, it's great when you look at these and there is a topic related to your business. Jump on that quickly. If I am Victor's Pizza, and it's National Pizza Day, and everyone's tweeting about pizza, and I see that as a trend, I'm going to start to tweet about that. If there's a hashtag, hashtag National Pizza Day, I'm going to include that hashtag in my tweets. Or I can click on that hashtag, and it's just going to give you a search result of everyone tweeting with that hashtag. And let's say I'm Victor's Pet Shop and today's National Puppy Day. These are all people that could possibly care about my pet shop. And this is going to go on and on and on with more tweets. I could then do the same thing. Follow some of these, like some of these, retweet, reply, do those social interactions. Um, and some will become followers. See, there's 20 more tweets in the time that I talk. 20 more potential followers. So that's why hashtags and trends are important, especially if there's one related to your topic going on right now. If there are any related to your topic, you know, you should also go and check that out too and and see what they are what they are about. So right here, Aztecs, uh, I guess San Diego State is 
winning 56. So that's a trend that's going on. It's very local to San Diego. Um, and I can use that also to, to find potential people. This might be really good because let's say I have a business locally, San Diego. And here, this particular hashtag at the moment is going on with the San Diego State Aztecs that's very local too. That are, that's people here in San Diego talking about this topic. I can then start to do the same thing about replying, retweeting, favoriting, following, and hopefully getting some of those back. Let me, let me have you think about it this way too. These hashtags, these trends, oftentimes there's a hashtag attached to some event. A sporting event, a movie, a TV show, a party, you know, a festival, etc. There's often a hashtag attached with some event. And let's say I've got Victor's Bakery. There's a whole cooking channel out there. There's bunches of, there's like five cooking channels out there with a bunch of TV shows on. I can go find the hashtag of a particular show you know, hashtag Top Chef. They're probably going to have that hashtag plastered all over the screen when you're watching the show. Look for it in the corners. And, oops, not Top Check, Top Chef. Top Chef 2016. So I'm a bakery, and I found hashtag Top Chef 2016. These are all of the people that are tweeting about that topic. I got to find out when this Top Chef is going on, what time actually so that I could live tweet with people at the moment that it's happening. These are real people right now hashtagging, tweeting about a topic, about the topic that my business is about. Therefore, they would be great for me to follow or be followed. Now everyone's tweeting in like uh, French at the moment, so I guess Top Chef France is going on or something. Um, But that's why we would care about trends and hashtags. This um, could also help me get more followers. Any questions so far? I'm going to repeat these topics for other networks when we get to them. But here's some things to start to think about. We're going to focus on Twitter for the current assignment. Let's go to the Let's go to Blackboard to see what the assignment is. I've already got it up there. Let's go to Blackboard. Let's see the assignment on Blackboard. So over in the assignments section, you've got the fifth assignment, Twitter. If you look at that, again, uh, you can print it after I'm done talking, please. There's a little um, intro here about uh, how social media, how Twitter is the new way, of, is the new form of marketing. Uh, what you need to do is set up, set up a Twitter account. It seems like everyone had one. I've got another video from another class where I also went step by step in creating the account. You can look at that if you'd like. But if you've got an account, you can use it. If you want to create a brand new one for your business, you can create a new one. Um, doesn't doesn't quite matter. But again, hopefully everything that you do in this class is for a for you know a real legitimate purpose. Um, you're going to tweet every day, one thing per day, for a week nonstop because we're going to have our very first assignment where you're going to think like a marketer. Um, so you need to uh, also fill in your bio and all of that stuff to be the most legitimate uh, account that you can. Send me your, your address, but also follow on Twitter so that I know that you're on Twitter. 
and if you just set up the account well you you should follow at least 10 accounts related to your business don't just follow Kim Kardashian and Justin Bieber like everyone else follow accounts related to what your business is big companies small companies whatever but the point of that is to you know that's kind of like to see the competition what are they doing get inspiration by what they're doing I can do something like that I can take a cool photo just like Cheesecake Factory and post it and I'm seeing what they're posting and I'm seeing who is reacting to that so that I can steal those followers that's why you still want to follow other accounts that's why I'm saying follow at least 10 accounts if right now you've already got a hundred followers follow 10 more think about it in terms of what I've talked about today why you want to follow accounts you can unfollow them later but it might be valuable to follow 10 more now that I've talked about it in these terms tweet something new every day until the deadline and you can tweet anything and I have examples here a text tweet link photo we didn't actually tweet ourselves because that that's kind of you know that's that's basic that's you know tweet add photo whatever you know what are you gonna tweet that's what I can't fully teach I can't fully teach what to tweet because it's your company you tell me what you're gonna tweet examples the tweet must be relevant to your company so don't just tweet crazy things like good morning everyone unless you are like you know a sleep therapy company I guess tweet something relevant about your company retweets do not count don't take Kanye's tweets and share them who cares you want Kanye to share your tweets so you're gonna tweet stuff don't do just don't focus on retweets the pictures and links and stuff can be of others sure you can go I'm Victor's Bakery I'm gonna go to the Food Network and I find a cool recipe and I'm gonna share that recipe fine I can do that because it doesn't always have to be me 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 buy this look at this subscribe it can be you know fun non salesmanship sort of things you can share these inspirational things you know I'm Victor's Bakery but today I'm gonna share the Monday motivation tweet you know getting out of bed is half the challenge great I'm done for Monday so that's why you want to jazz it up see what the competition is doing interacting with accounts does not count toward your 10 posts but it's encouraged so what I'm saying is you tweeted once on Monday and then the rest of the week you replied to people that doesn't count you have to put a post original tweets every day one new tweet every day again retweets don't count the Twitter assignment is worth 10 points and it says How right here previous, post? previous. Nope. you need something original every day uh, because first of all whatever you posted was before the assignment so it doesn't count and then now that you're replying to people it's a reply and we're not counting replies we're counting original content so the thing is that um, tweet something new every day until the deadline the deadline is April 4th let's take a look at the calendar so you should start today and then one tweet every day yes that's gonna be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 whole tweets? How can I possibly do that? Well, people get to the point where they've accumulated, just naturally, without even trying, they get to the point where they've accumulated a few tweets. You know, it happens. It's okay. You use it and it, and it adds up. 12 tweets in one and a half weeks is nothing. And so, the um, assignment is not overboard because the point of it also is for you to think about what am I going to tweet again? What am I going to tweet tomorrow? And hopefully you think of interesting creative things and if you've never done this before, yeah, it might be difficult. That's okay, I'm not actually tweet, uh, grading you on like exactly what you tweet because again, this whole class what's the point of the grades? It's really more about what are you getting out of it for your real life your real business we believe that it's against our religion <laughs> nope <laughs> unless you show me a doctor's note I, I just <laughs>
the no, an, the, an, the anti tweetists I remember thinking with all the social networks, man, I can never see myself being on Twitter. Like, because you know they say you pretty much have to tweet a lot on Twitter to even make any kind of a splash. No, yeah. because again, if you're just tweeting out to the void and no one's paying attention, yeah. then that's not quite working. You still have to engage in some of the social aspects. Yeah. And then when you've got a bunch of followers and you tweet one simple thing, suddenly you get a lot of replies. So it is chicken before the egg, or, heart, or cart before the horse. So um, that's the assignment. You're going to tweet something every day, and it's very open-ended about what you're going to do. And again, uh, content-wise, I'm not forcing you to do a certain thing. It's very open. You can put pictures and or just text or questions or polls and it's okay if you don't get any replies especially as a beginner now without a big audience that's okay I just want you to get in the habit of tweeting often and perhaps you will decide you'll see it's not so bad I do have something to share from my company often maybe not every day but maybe once a week twice a week three times a week I don't know you have to get used to being active on social media because that's the big thing about modern SEO, modern search engine optimization. You have an amazing website in WordPress. No one knows about it. Right now, when you created that blog post, you probably have no traffic on it, except the one time that I visited it. Well, maybe you've got a few followers on Twitter or Facebook or whatever that would like to read that article. You're going to tweet your own post on your social media, and that could get you more traffic back to your post. So, any questions? There's still many mu more nuances to talk about social media and such, but let's start off like this. And um, we'll have a little lab time in case you want some one-on-one, -on -one, and you've got the assignment. Remember that next week is spring break, so I will not be here, and you shouldn't be here either. And we'll be back on the 6th, March 6th. Or April. April, April 6th, yes. We're going to go back in time to March 6th. No, I mean April 6th, yes.